Hey Compass Kids, it is Miss Elise here with you today. I am so excited to teach you more about the life of David. Today we are in lesson number 22 and we are going to talk about David wanting to build something for God and then God saying, no David, I'm going to build something for you. It's a huge lesson. I'm really excited to teach it to you. But before I teach it to you, I would love to pray with you. Can you guys fold your hands and close your eyes with me so that we can talk to God with focused, quiet hearts? Let's pray. God, I thank you for this day that you've given us to worship you. God, I thank you even as I think about this lesson I get to teach these kids, Lord. It's so exciting to be reminded of how good you are to us, that you have given us not only the things that we need to live here on earth, but you have given us um, the the answer and the, um, the recipe and the um, just everything that we need to uh, be with you and, and have the things that we need for our soul, God. So I thank you for that. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray that um, our kids just do a great job listening right now and that they do a great job learning uh, who you about who you are and what you have done through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for this morning, Lord. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Today we are, of course, going to draw some pictures. So if you have something to draw with, please grab it. Um, we're going to be drawing three pictures, so it's up to you. You can either fold a piece of paper into threes, or you can just get three pieces of paper. But I'm going to draw really big on here, and then when I'm done, I'm going to erase it, and we'll draw our next picture, okay? So I would love for you to grab those things, and when you're ready, I also want you to open your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 7. I have mine right here. Let me grab it. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Last time you guys learned about how David, um, you learned how he mourned for King Saul as King Saul died, how he was anointed king. Um, and now we're going to talk a little bit about what God is going to do. Now that David's finally in charge, God has big, big plans. And so we're going to talk a little bit about God's biggest plan that he has for David. Okay, so our story opens today with David talking to his prophet Nathan. You might remember Nathan. He's the one, um, he's a prophet, and so he talks to God, and God talks to him, and then Nathan will talk to David. So David's talking to Nathan, and he says, Nathan, I have a great idea. Let's open our Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 7. Make sure you're in 2 Samuel, not 1 Samuel. We've already read through that book. We're in chapter 7. We're going to read verse 1 right now. It says, Now when the king lived in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, verse 2, the king said to Nathan, that's David talking to Nathan, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. So David starts the story by being kind of upset. And he says, Nathan, you know, I feel really bad. I live in this beautiful house made of cedar. That's a kind of wood. And it's beautiful and it's fit for a king. But God's ark of the covenant, you guys might remember the ark of the covenant. I'll put a picture right here. The place where we talk to God and we worship God, that ark of the covenant, it's in a tent, a yucky tent with carpet floors and just like fabric around it. Like that's not the same as my beautiful house and God's house should be way better than my house. We need to build something for God that is beautiful and reflects his character. And so Nathan hears this. Let's see what he says. Verse three. And Nathan said to the king, go, do all that is in your heart for the Lord is with you. He says, yes, David, that sounds like a great idea. Go do that. Okay, now we're going to write down our first point right here. We just learned that David wants to build a house for God. Point number one, the first thing that happens is David wants to build a house for who? For God. I'm going to write for the Lord because that's what the Bible says. Capital L-O-R-D. 
And when we see that in our English Bibles, we know that that word right here actually is the word Yahweh, which is God's name. So God, David wants to build a house for God. Nathan says, yes, go ahead and do it. Um, and something happens. God talks to Nathan that night in a dream. Nathan goes to sleep and, da and God comes to Nathan in a dream. And he says, Nathan, you have said the wrong thing. And he corrects Nathan. He says, Nathan, have I ever, have I ever asked for a house? Have I ever asked any of the people in charge, whether it was Saul or back when, Sa when Samuel was the prophet, and even now David has been the king, have I ever commanded you to build me a house? I commanded you to build me that tabernacle, that big tent where the ark is, but I've never asked you to build me a house before. And not only that, but he says, I have given Israel everything that they've needed. Right now, Israel has no enemies. There's no war right now. I've given them everything they've needed, and I didn't need a house to do that. And he says, you know what? David cannot build me a house. I'm a perfect God, and David has shed a lot of blood. David is a soldier, and he's shed a lot of blood in his lifetime. He's not the right person to build me a house. You should not have told him yes to that, to that question. David's heart was in the right place, you guys, but God says, no, that's not what I asked for. Um, and David's not the right person to do that. So he corrects him. Um, let's draw a picture of this point. We're going to draw a picture of David talking to Nathan about building a house. You can copy my picture or you can draw your own picture about what we just talked about. Okay. to Nathan and he says, I want to build God a house. Nathan says, that's a great idea. And then God says, Nathan, that was not a good idea. You should not have told him yes. So he goes back to David. He says, David, God talked to me last night and he said, you can't build him a house. Um, but God also gives Nathan some good news. Not only does he say, you can't, David cannot build me a house, but then God says something awesome okay we're ready for point number two if you haven't finished drawing your picture i want you to pause the video finish drawing your picture because i'm about to erase it let's go to point number two okay point number two god makes a promise, God promises to build a house for David. Do you guys remember our first point? Our first point was David wanting to build a house for God. The second point is God is going to build a house for David. And I know some of you are thinking, doesn't David already have a house? What does God mean? He's, is God going to build him a better house? Well, when God says the word house, I don't want you to think of a building. I want you to think of a big, big, big family. I'm going to draw some faces so that we remember. When God is going to talk about a house, he's not going to talk about a building. He's going to talk about a big, big family tree of people. Okay, so that's going a little too far in the story. Let's get back to what happened. Nathan's in a dream. God has told him, David's not going to build me a house. God now says to Nathan, I'm going to build David a house. 
not just any building. That's too boring. God is thinking bigger picture, okay? He says, I'm going to give David something even better. And to help us remember this, I want you to help me draw a kind of house just to help us. We're just drawing a picture to help us remember some things God is going to say. Can you guys draw this with me? It's very important that your house has five parts. Do you see? One, two, three, four, five. I drew five parts because God is going to say five things about David's house that he's going to give him. Okay? Are you guys ready? We're going to call this big thing, by the way, the Davidic covenant. That's a big word, so I'm going to write it down. Davidic covenant. I know my older guys, you guys know what these words mean already, but for my younger ones, this is the thing I'm about to tell you that God is going to tell Nathan is so, so huge in the Bible. It's such a big deal that we call it the Davidic covenant. That means the promise. Covenant means promise. The promise to David, the Davidic covenant. It's just fancy way of saying the big promise to David. It's there's five parts, okay? Part number one, God says, I'm going to give David a great name. Let's write that down. A great name. In other words, David is going to be a very famous guy. Everyone is going to know who David is for the rest of history. And they're going to think about David with good thoughts. He's going to have a great, a big, a good name. Is that true? Have you guys ever heard of David before? Of course you have. Even people who have not read the Bible and do not love God, even they know who David is. David is famous because he was such a good, humble king. And so God promises, and we already know that comes true, don't we? That David is going to have a great, a good, a famous name. Okay, not only that, he says, I'm going to give you rest from all your enemies. So this is actually two parts in one. We're going to write it also. A great name and rest. That doesn't mean he's going to sleep for a long time. That means that God is not going to give David any more big enemies to fight. If he does have an enemy to fight, David is going to win no problem. David is going to have rest from all of the problems that his enemies could give him. That's a pretty good promise for a king. What if God told you for the rest of your life, you're not all those big problems that you've been having, you're not going to have any more big problems. Wouldn't you just feel like you've rested? That's what God promises David. He says, I'm going to give you rest. And remember, I'm also going to give you that big, great name. So that's the first thing that God promises. That's already so good, isn't it? If God just ended it right there, we'd be like, wow, that's awesome. David can relax. David has been given a great reward, but God is not done. God has so many more good things to promise David. Okay, the next thing he promises David, I'm going to do this in a different color just because I can. We're going to say God promises Israel, the whole country that David is in charge of, that Israel is going to have land and that Israel is going to have and peace. I didn't write this very clearly. It says Israel is going to have land and peace. Wow. So not just is David going to get taken care of, but God says, you know, that big country you're in charge of, you're so worried about because it's God's people. I love that you're like that, David. I'm going to give Israel land, a place to live, and peace. They're not going to have big enemies that are going to totally destroy them forever. They will forever have land and they will have peace. That doesn't mean life is going to be perfect. doesn't mean there's not never going to be problems for the Israelites, as we'll see as we keep going through the Bible. But ultimately, at the end of the day, Israel will have a place to live and they will have peace. They will have rest. That is an excellent promise that David can relax a little bit. And he is so thankful that God is going to be good to his people, not just him, but to his people. Okay. 
the next thing God promises, it just gets better and better. The next thing God promises is he says, David, I know you were so wanting to build me a home. Um, you wanted to build me a big place that's really fancy, somewhere to live or somewhere to um, somewhere really, really fancy that people come and work, can come and worship me. Um, that's very noble of you, David. You're not going to build that, though. You've shed too much blood. Instead, I'm going to make it that your son, your child, is going to build me a temple. We're going to call it a temple because that's where God is going to live. It's not a house where God actually comes and he sleeps and he eats and not like that. This is a temple. So David's son will build a temple. In a few weeks, you guys, we're going to get to learn about that. We're going to actually get to learn about David's child growing up, becoming the king, and he's going to build God a temple. That's a great lesson. We're going to save that. Take that little idea. Remember that promise? Put it in your pocket. We're going to pull it out another week, okay? But that's a promise that God gives David. Awesome. The fourth promise. Can you believe that there's even more good things God is promising for David? The first, the, or the fourth thing, sorry, that God promises, he says, you know, David, you're going to have lots of children and your children are going to be loved by me. I'm going to take care of your children, David. Now you guys will learn David's children are actually, uh, most of them are really disobedient children. Um, so God promises that he's going to be like a father to David's children and he will discipline them when they need discipline. God doesn't just going to be like, oh, David's children, they're so annoying. They're so disobedient. They're so sinful. Forget them. I'm not even going to help them at all. Nope. God makes a promise. He says, um, let's see, let's try. Uh, you know what? I'm trying to think of a good way to word this. Let's say God will. Um, be a father to David's sons. All of David's sons that he's going to have, God says, I'm going to take care of them like a father would. I'm going to love them. I'm going to discipline them when they need discipline. He even says specifically, God says, I will use the men that are there. The people in charge will discipline them. Um, and I won't forget them. I will be like a father to them. What a good promise. Um, I bet you could ask your parents, you guys, when you have children, you are so worried. What if, what if something were to happen to me? Who would take care of my children? I love them so much. David doesn't have to worry about that. God just made a huge promise. He said, David, you don't need to worry about any of your children. After you die, I will take care of your children. Who better to take care of your children than God? God says, I personally am going to look out for them. I will take care of them. If they're sinful, I will discipline them. <sighs> what another burden that God, David can say, oh, I have rest. I'm so thankful. God is so good to me. Um, yeah. Now that's four big things, you guys, that happens in David's lifetime, even a little bit after David's lifetime that he can rest and not worry about. But God is not done. In fact, this would not be a very big deal if it weren't for promise number five. I saved it for the top because it is the most important promise. It's the biggest deal. It's why we give it a special name, the Davidic Covenant. Are you guys ready to learn it? Number five, I'm going to read it directly from the Bible. If you have your Bible, I want you to open to 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16. This is the last promise. He says, he's talking to David, remember, and your house, are we talking about a physical house? No, we're talking about your family. And your house and your kingdom shall be made forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. There's a lot of big words in there. Let's talk about it. What is he saying? He used a lot of words in there. Did you guys hear the word forever a lot? Did you hear the word eternity? Those are big promises. Let's write it down this way. The last promise, the most important one, you guys, what color should I make it? If it's the most important one, ah, oh, 
Let's do, what color have I not used yet? We're gonna do orange, okay? The biggest promise that God has, he says, David, your house, your family is going to be king forever. I'm just going to write king forever. What? David's family? Someone in David's family is going to be the king forever. Or maybe it just means, David, your family is always going to be in charge. You're always going to be the one that is looking over Israel. There's lots of things that I'm sure David was wondering, what does God mean by that? And you guys, if we think just just like temporarily, if we're thinking just about the, our world right now or our life right now, it's not enough because you know what? God can't mean, David, you're just you're going to have a son and he's going to be king and then he's going to have a son and he'll be king and it'll just go that way forever and there'll just always be a king over Israel that's related to you. That's not what God means. And you know how we know that? We know that's not what God means because right now in Israel, there is no king in Israel right now. If God meant, hey, David, what I mean is forever and ever and ever and ever, one of your family members will be the king of Israel. That's such a small way of thinking. And we know that's not what God meant because right now there is no actual king in Israel. There's a government in charge, but it's not a king like God had said. So God must mean something different. And we, you know, I wonder how David was thinking of this. If David knew what God was meaning. Um, Let's talk about it. Let's go really quick, you guys. Can you um, open your Bibles for me to... Oh, wait, you know what? I'm going to save that. Never mind. (laughs) Um, Let's talk a little bit. What does God mean forever? Can you guys take another color or maybe the same one, whatever you want, and talk about, we're going to talk about the word forever. Thankfully, God does not leave us to wonder what this means. God is very clear to us as we look back on the Bible and we can study it. The word forever means a very long time or it means in the future forever and ever and ever eternity in the future like when god when we're in heaven that that's the word forever like when i say i'm gonna live forever i don't mean i'm not gonna die someday i just mean oh later after i die then i'll live forever that's what god means here he doesn't mean david you're gonna have family that's that's a king and then their son is a king and then their son is a king he means someday there will be a king who's related to you And he will be the king forever, for all of eternity. And God says a lot of things. If you guys want to look back at it, you can. We're almost out of time. Uh, But you can read on. God says this king is going to be um, in charge forever. He's going to have a throne forever. He's going to be like a son to me. He's going to be a perfect person. God talks about this promise, this part of this promise. He talks about so much. He talks about it in the book of Psalms. He talks about it in the book of Proverbs. He talks about it in the book of Isaiah. He talks about it in all those small little books at the end of the Old Testament, all of those major and minor prophets. God talks about this guy, this promise, this king, so, 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 so much. Okay. So it's awesome. I'm almost out of time. You guys, we've got to get a point number three. So let's erase our picture. Remember, if you didn't get all that, you guys can just pause the video, go back a little bit and pause it and copy it all down. Ah, let's, let's erase all this. What do you guys think David is going to do when he hears all of this? When Nathan wakes up from his dream, he gets up, he eats breakfast and he goes to David and he says, David, you, just you wait until you hear what God told me last night. What do you guys think David is going to do? Do you think David is like, bummer, I wanted to build a house for God. That's such a bummer. No, we know David. David's a great guy. He loves God. David praises God. We're going to write kind of two things here. David praises God and prays. that the promise will come true. David does two things. He praises God. He says, wow, I don't deserve a promise like that. 
I, you're telling me that I'm going to be taken care of, my children will be taken care of, and my country will be taken care of, and that even you're going to provide a king one day to be in charge forever? That is huge. I don't deserve something like that. God, you're making a big, big promise. I do not deserve that. I'm so thankful for all of that. He gives thanksgiving. Um, he says, wow, God, you're going to keep Israel safe forever. That is such a good promise to us. Um, and not only that, but David then talks back to God and he prays and he says, God, I pray that these things will come true. Now, if God says it, is it going to come true? Of course we, it is. We know that David's just so excited that he's like, God, I cannot wait for these things to come true. God, please do these things soon. It's the same thing that we pray now because you guys know who is this mystery person that God is going to provide for Israel and for David. Who is that mystery person who's going to be the king forever and ever and ever? Let's look. Let's go to Luke, New Testament. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. We're skipping way forward because we've got a long lesson here and I don't want to make it much longer for you. You guys are being so patient. Let's go to Luke chapter 1. Verse 26, you guys learned about this story at Christmas time. I bet you've read this at Christmas. I want you to listen. I'm going to read to you these verses. I'm going to read verse 26 all the way to 33. I want you to listen and hear if you remember any of these words, if they sound familiar about anything we've talked about, anything that God said in Second Samuel. You ready? Let's listen. Let's get some context. We're going to read the beginning here. It says, um, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Oh, so Joseph was related to David, they're telling us. Oh, and the virgin's name was Mary. Okay, so an angel is coming to talk to Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. Okay, I want you guys to listen. For you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Here's some things about Jesus. Are you guys listening? He will be great. And will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign forever over the house of Jacob. And his kingdom, there will be no end. Does that sound familiar? Yes. God is like, okay, everyone, just in case you didn't put it together, God writes this down in the Bible for us, that God, that king that God was talking about is going to all is going to be Jesus. All of that is going to come true. And that king that God is talking to David about, you and I are like, well, obviously that's Jesus. We know that we've seen it in the Bible, but you guys, we only know that because we have the whole Bible written out and we can just read it for ourselves. They didn't have that back then. They didn't have the New Testament yet. They didn't know who this king was going to be. And so we're so excited that we can look back and say, oh, God says right here in Luke, you guys, the angel tells Mary, you know, that throne, that king that God has promised that's going to your son, the baby that is in your tummy, to Jesus. That's going to be the guy who's the king. That is so exciting, you guys. Um, we're going to draw a picture of David. David is going to be really excited because we read that David praises God and he prays because he's thinking about this big, big promise. He's thinking about all the promises, but this big, big one is really, really important. So let's draw King David again. Um, I'm going to draw him praying. I know what's going to happen and it's exciting, but let's stop right here as we go through the Old Testament and we think about what God is going to do. Up till now, God has given little hints. But you guys, this point of the Bible is so exciting because this is where God says specifically, he says, I'm going to provide someone who is in charge and he is going to make everything good. He's going to be like my son, meaning he's going to be just like me. And that person is going to be in charge forever. That is so exciting, you guys, because we know that that person is going to be our king. Um, 
yeah, that's why this lesson is so exciting. That's why Christmas is so exciting. So as we think about that, let's pray. Um, let's get you guys, I know you guys got to work on your worksheets and your color pages. So let's pray and thank God for this lesson. Father God, I thank you for, um, I thank you for the chapter that we're reading today, 2 Samuel chapter 7, where we read about all you want to do for not just David and not just his family, which is exciting, um, but there's things that you want to do for us, that you want to provide uh, someone who is in charge of us and who helps us and who leads us um, in what we're supposed to do, God. So I thank you for that. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is that king, who is coming back one day to be in charge forever and ever, and who will make all things right, God. I thank you for him. Um, God, I pray that these kids would recognize who that is, that they would recognize whether or not they are on his team or if they're on their own team and they want to do things their way and not God's way, Lord. I pray that you would change their hearts, God. I thank you for these Compass kids. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, have a good rest of your service. Make sure you're working on your, um, your stuff and you're able to let mom and dad finish the rest of their lesson. Okay, bye.